Hey everyone, it's Zereldo here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Chaos Slayer classes again. Now, you might be wondering why I'm doing this when I've already done a guide. That guide, in a sense, is incomplete. It's a basic version which gives you the basic idea of how these classes work. But this is going to be more detailed, more nitty gritty. It's going to have these sort of exact details, and it's going to have the um, new passive and updates, and just just show you all the cool stuff uh, that I wasn't able to show in the first guide. So if you're happy with the way the other guide was and you've got your basic idea, then that's fine. If you want something more detailed, then go ahead and watch this one instead. So before anyone asks, this other account, totally not Sorello, is my account. I use him for testing stuff and uh, seeing things. Why am I using him here? Well, I want to show you the requirements of the Chaos Slayer class. You need either rank 10 chaos or you need 2000 adventure coins so you come to a place called mount doom skull slash join mount doom skull and you just click on the chaos layer class button over here uh, and this gives you the option you can either buy it if you've got rank 10 chaos and you can do the quests here as well or you can buy it for 2000 adventure coins what you might notice is that there are actually four different versions of this class in terms of art and eight different viable versions Berserker, Thief, Cleric, which wasn't actually out in the original video, and my favorite, Mystic. Uh, they are all the same, but they're all based off a different one of the base classes. Uh, they're essentially your sort of Chaos Lord class, and you'll understand exactly what that means if you play through Mount Doom Skull and the story of AQ Worlds. There are so 100,000 gold in rank 10 Chaos, or 2000 ACs, you can also just buy, if you like the armors, the armor versions, there are helms and hair and all sorts of things to go with it, as well as a few capes that often look quite cool. So that's up to you how you get it. Uh, might take a while to rank up, but it is doable. Once you have your Chaos Slayer class, whichever one you've chosen, you'll want to enhance it. I recommend going with Full Luck because it is a Chaos class. It's got that aspect of randomness that you really want to go with. Uh, you'll definitely want the high crits for this class, I'm just going to say that. Strength and Intellect are around the same and you don't really need to worry too much about bolstering either. Uh, if you look at the moves, it's physical and magical. This one doesn't do damage so you don't have to worry and it's physical and magical. The auto attack is physical but you don't really need to worry about that. Often I'd say bring up your health with fighter enhancements. Uh, if you look at the first passive it brings up your endurance by 25%. Now a cool little thing when the class was initially, initially released it only had M enmity. Goodness I can't get that word right any time. But it only had this first passive and that was an endurance increase of 25%, which is quite sizable. But now it also comes with ultimate power. Now this was actually decided by the Doomwood War, the Doomwood Chaos War, Chaos One, and so all attacks are now 10% more powerful. So that's a pretty good passive to have. Makes yeah, makes everything more powerful. That will really make a difference compared to the old video. So if you're in interested in the comparisons, just look at the old video and versus the new and see how it goes. In terms of ore enhancements, the Blade of Ore enhancements, I'd recommend going with Spiral Carve first and foremost for all the extra crits and the damage potential from there. Failing that, you might want a little bit of health regen, but this class is pretty good with staying alive. Or you might want MP because this class might run out every now and then. In terms of mana regeneration, it's a lot like Berserker classes where the less HP you have, the uh, more MP you're gonna get. So, uh, have fun with that. So the first thing to take note of with this new class is its auto attack. As you can see, it is an area of effect auto attack, and I've probably said words very similar to this before. It will attack between one to two enemies. Now, you can also see the Chaos Blight effect. Now, if you remember, at the beginning of this, the attack was just over 199, and now it's almost at 300. So you get the idea. Chaos Blight 
increases how much damage you do. Now I'll do a big example of this later on in the video, but for now I will progress with the other moves. Uh, you may have seen that area, an area of effect auto attack means it's quite hard to opt out of being attacked by multiple opponents, but that's what your first move's for, it's called K-Eruption, 15 mana, 5 second cooldown based off your physical mana stuff, and you attack your enemy for a nice amount of damage, and your move becomes single target. This is also just a nice repeatable move for damage, uh, also empowered by Chaos Blight. This is a lot like Undead Slayer in that respect. You stack your Spirit Orbs with that, here you stack your Chaos Blight, just not quite to 200. Uh, as you can see, everything is getting significantly more powerful. So, we'll skip this move here because there's tricky stuff to go with, and this is the um, move that I'm going to have to spend a lot of time explaining, and that also links up with Pandemonium. But we'll skip that for now. Your uh, third move, Surge, is a heal or a defense boost. Now, I believe it's a 65% defense boost, or a nice heal over time. The cool thing about the heal over time is that it's three ticks, as you can see it, as you can see it started off quite nicely at 300, but with Chaos Blight, it will increase significantly. Now you can see um, they're not really doing all that much damage to me. So we'll just uh, hopefully get a bit of heal, there we go. As you can see it hasn't actually taken long at all for the heal over time to get stronger. Well, all the moves to get stronger, really. Now, one thing I neglected to mention about the starting move is that it also gives you a 10% extra chance to crit and to hit. So if you're wanting to focus on one particular target, this move is the move to use. You've also got your uh, final move, Pandemonium. 30 mana, 15 second cooldown. And this is a massive explosion of chaos which hits up to six targets, so I think I might have still been on a sort of single target mode. So we'll just wait for that to happen again. Now here we go. As you can see we had a four thousand five hundred crit, I believe. Just activate some heal. Uh, you've got your <laughs> heal over time healing for more health than I actually have. There we go. So it looks like single attacks are in the thousands. There we go, Chaos Blight. Right, so I'll just show you an early version of this before too much Chaos Blight. There we go, early 800s to start with, and then it gets higher and higher and higher. So those are your basic moves. Now I will get on to explaining... Enigma and Pandemonium. Hey look, a random person. So now for the interesting flavorsome part of the class, it's called Enigma. It's a move, 13 MP, 4 second cooldown. It doesn't do any damage, so the magic calls are relevant. Now it's multi-target, hits up to 6 enemies at a time, and applies 4 effects. Uh, it doesn't always apply all 4, it'll apply none sometimes. Sometimes it'll apply 1, 2, 3 or all four. Uh, I'm just going to show you it in a single way to try and explain what each of the effects does. Now, let's just keep it single. Okay, we've got Anguish, Impasse, and Courageous, so you'll have to hopefully try and see several effects at once, and you might have to rewind every now and then. Uh, anguished, your opponents take 50% more damage, which is a nice effect. There we go, none applied then. Uh, impasse traps your target, uh, they don't dodge. Now, um, just to take it back a step, Anguished, where they take 50% more damage, that lasts for 10 seconds. I'm not sure how long Impasse lasts, but they don't have much of a chance to dodge. Now, that's more useful for PvP than anywhere else, but could help with enemies. You've got Delusion, which makes your opponent a lot less likely to hit you. And then you've got the sort of bad one. There is one bad one and it doesn't seem to want to activate. It's called 
courageous and that increases your enemy's damage resistance they won't be able to attack you as often uh, which is a pain so I mean they sorry it increases their resistance so you won't do as much damage I zoned out for a second there uh, you'll do half damage so you don't want to get them with courageous now I said that this links in with the final move and that's because it does each of these effects sort of changes so anguished for example you can't really see it I'll just wait for the chaos blade to stack but anguished which increases your target dam uh, damage taken making you do 50% more damage that changes to atrophy which means they do 50% damage less to you or half damaged uh, half damage delusion which is the one that makes them less likely to hit you uh, will apply ataxia which makes them less likely to critical hit you so that can be useful against bosses with spike damage that crit a lot uh, impasse changes into numbing and that will make them a lot less slower for 10 seconds so they won't be attacking you or doing nearly as much damage finally you have courageous which was the one that actually made them take less damage and this will make them do more damage it applies the effect paragon and that makes them do 500 percent damage that means well these guys are capable of dealing over 500 when that happens so you don't want to take this to a boss fight and apply courageous and then paragon because that will make your opponent uh, make the boss do a lot of damage now this is a bit unrealistic to use at times when you've got several opponents like this and they all have several effects applied to them at once in such a short space of time and you can't really read them all and then you press your big explosion button and all the effects evolve you don't really know what you've got coming your way you really want to have your heal and your damage resistance increased and operating and just got to hope that raw power is enough as you can see six thousands thousands hundreds and crits are happening all over the place uh, it's a high risk class in that sense the what I will say is courageous happens a lot less often than the other effects so you don't have a huge chance if you're going single target it's fine because you can see it coming and not evolve the effect but in an e when you're facing multiple enemies that can be a bit hard so one final thing before I forget the rank 10 passive is 35% spell resist now that gives you a hundred percent spell resistance if you use this move here uh, which basically makes you immune to spells but you still will take physical damage now to wrap up the video I'm just going to show you how powerful your moves can get when you have full chaos blight so it looks like chaos blight has maxed out uh, with my stable damage range I'm doing 357 damage on an auto attack uh, 1000 on a crit the heal over time is just over 900 which is quite nice if we're looking at some of the other moves like K eruption we are looking at a 900 non crit and hopefully I'll find out what the crit is for you soon we'll just a 3000 crit if we are looking at pandemonium we are looking at 1,400 damage on a non-crit. Hopefully we can find out what the crit damage is. Uh, 4,500. Now if we're talking about other damage boosts from the effects, that can go much higher. And if you're using an unstable damage ranged weapon, that can also go much higher. So you've got the general idea. It's a powerful class, and over long boss battles, it'll get more powerful. And uh, the effects can really make a difference. So I hope you enjoy this one, and I hope you enjoy meddling with your chaos power. Uh, until next time, bye.